Well, it's a beautiful day. It sure is. It's actually really warm. It's actually hot, and we're ready to open up the railroad. Um, we actually ran it during the winter, right up to the point where we couldn't because the snow got clear up to the top of the buildings here. But um, unlike the previous railroad, it, there's not a darn thing wrong with it. No, it's really, it's pretty good. I, I, I see one little tiny piece of damage. The tree tipped over. Oh, we will we can, rebuild. Can you fix? Good job. Yeah, Perfect. It is. And that's it. That's all the repair work done for the whole winter. Yeah, the door on the little depot house thing is open. I wonder if somebody's yeah, I, going I in there. I've got to do it that way. Oh, I thought maybe somebody had moved in over the winter. Well, I wanted them to have shelter. Oh, okay. Well, we can so I left the door. I left the door open. Uh, oh my gosh, he's in there. <laughs> As long as he's not using the bathroom. But even looking up under here, there's no water damage because the roofing is working, everything is working. It looks just like it did a year ago when we built it. No warping, everything's square and straight. And just like it was a year ago. So unlike <laughs> now there was one bit of major damage. Hi, squirrel. The tree tipped over. Yes. And so we've we've got. Uh, it's ongoing, isn't it? <laughs> it's been trying to tip over for some years. It blew over in the big windstorm, and then the one snowstorm brought part of it down, and now it's all just in a big mess. And so, unfortunately, they say we have to take the whole tree down now. But uh, it must be spring. I just saw my first bumblebee. Oh, good! I he love just, bumblebees. He, just went bumbling he bumbled right, right past. Anyway, looking good. Yes. So we sort of need to start at the beginning, right? With the plan. Yes. <laughs> so several years ago, uh, came up with this idea for an elevated backyard railroad, and that one side there you can see is a completely wooden fence. So in uh, 2019, the summer of 2019, we hired a couple of different people to help us out to build this thing. And uh, this was attempt number one. Yes. Uh, also known as the failed attempt. And part of the problem were these big tall posts. They stick eight feet out of the ground, meaning that two feet of the post is, is buried into the ground because they're actually 10 foot long four by fours, two feet buried, eight feet exposed. Now, the problem with that is we hired a different crew to cement these into the ground. Uh -huh. And uh, instead of digging down two feet and cementing them in place, they dug down as far as they felt comfortable with and then cemented them in place. Yes. And then cut the tops off to be all level. So some were buried two feet into the ground, some were only buried about a foot into the ground. The bigger problem, if that isn't bad enough, then they ran out of cement. And rather than saying anything to us, they just filled two of the holes in with dirt and then poured about two inches of cement on top of the dirt so we couldn't tell that they'd filled the hole with dirt. Now, a lot of the problems here are design problems if you have eight feet of pole sticking straight up with no support across the top, guess what they do? I would imagine they're going to turn every which direction. They warp every which direction, especially when you're using pressure treated wood. Ah. I had no idea that it warps worse than any other kind of wood. You wouldn't think so. So uh, looking into even fence construction or anything, you have to have a support rail at the top. Otherwise, these things are going to bend left, right, forward, back. They're not going to remain straight for more than a few days. That's amazing. Uh, they just start shifting immediately. Another major design problem is here. I had sort of envisioned this being basically a fence with a shelf on it. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It seemed to make sense to me. So we wanted to create these shelf brackets, if you will, out of two by fours and uh, 
that I thought that would work well, but there was a, a tremendous design problem. Had I run the diagonal piece all the way to the ground, it would have been much, much stronger. But as it is, it puts a tremendous amount of stress right here. You wouldn't think so, but I can see how. So as any weight is on this, it pushes down on the diagonal support and that tries to pull this joint away from the pole. Oh, wow. And the, the worker that put that in, instead of screwing that to the metal bracket, he toenail, toenailed it in. Oh. So it pulled the nails out. Yes, I could see, yeah. And here's the next design problem. Oh. I thought, well, just build it sort of like a deck and just deck it over with, uh, uh, with two by sixes, or in this case, two by eights. And uh, that should be sufficient except that those brackets are six feet apart and running these things for six feet uh, means that the the two by eights that are on top of there are just going to warp like crazy yes. especially where they're pressure treated wood so the plan was to simply screw these to the shelf brackets and have two of them constituting the width of the railroad and calling that sufficient right and it actually turned out really, really nice. Nice. I was thrilled with it for about a week. Yes, it was really fun at first. Yeah, for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was raining the day I laid the track out here and first started rolling cars up and down it. And uh, boy, was I tickled. Yeah. This was just so fun. Yes, finally. Finally, a railroad working out in the backyard. Not on no locomotives, but I could push cars around. Right. Anyway, those 2 by 8 started twisting, and my solution was to put some OSB uh, strand board over the top of that with some roofing material, uh -huh. thinking that the OSB would pull everything into square uh, and it didn't. The 2 by 8s underneath just continued warping, and as they warped, they just twisted the OSB right along with it. It just started, went from bad to worse. And about then, these brackets uh, that hadn't been screwed started pulling free, um, and the front edge of the railroad started dropping relative to the back edge of the railroad at some of the brackets, but not all of the brackets. And uh, I, when I crawled down under here to see what was going on, I was just shocked to see this. these nails were just being pulled out. Right. And it's like, I don't see a fix for this short of tearing the whole deck off the posts mm -hmm. and putting a whole new uh, shelf on here. I think we can keep the posts, but look at this. Yeah. Just... And, and this is after eight weeks. Right. It was just a disaster. Right. Look at that, it just makes me sick. Oh, sickening. It looks like San Francisco in 1906. Doesn't it? Oh. Except that this is our backyard and right. it's a tragedy. Oh, no kidding. So I decided, well, just tear that whole thing apart. I think the vertical posts are salvageable and everything else is gonna have to be rebuilt. Now in two places, when it first started to shift, I would reinforced it by putting front legs. Right. And that's actually working out pretty well. And I thought that's probably what it needs the whole length of the railroad is build it just sort of like actual railroad bench work with both a front and back leg instead of doing like shelf brackets of any kind. So I started by ripping up all the track yeah. and taking all of the structures off of there and taking the, the lattice work off of there and started to tear apart the underlying bench work here. Uh. The strand board looks okay, and I thought, you know, the strand board probably would have been all right had it not been for the two by eights underneath twisting this and warping it up. But look how much warping there is in the strand board because the the pressure treated lumber underneath. Look at the, the warping here. Uh, it's just like a seesaw snake thing, Dill. Oh man, oh, so man. just start stripping the whole thing apart and tearing the shelf off the posts.
Now here again, with the strand board off, you can really see how the front edge on some of those brackets has just dropped by as much as four inches. Oh, it's crazy. It looks like a roller coaster. It's horrible. And this is because of the failure of the, the shelf brackets. And look at this. This one is now just pulled completely away from the post. That's just crazy. It's not even hooked to it anymore. No. But here again, you can see where the front legs are on there that had held it more or less level and straight where I put those two front legs in. So I think that is a good design feature once all of the rest of this is torn off of here. Boy, I'm hoping this wood can be salvaged. I'm thinking most of it can. Oh, I hope so. Um, but at this point, once we got the entire shelf torn off of here, now you can see that I cut down two of the vertical posts because they were so twisted um, that I thought, well, I just have to cut the whole tops off. It was now I realized that half of these posts weren't even properly secured into the ground. No, you could just wiggle them around by hand. Even I could, and I'm not super woman. So all we did was grab them and pull them out. Right. And there's what's left. Yep. The two front posts that I put in and one of the rear posts and the rest of it's all out here in the driveway. Oh my gosh. And most of this is not going to be recyclable. So anyway, here's my plan. Oh, another one. <laughs> a, a more positive note here. So here's the new design. It's very similar to the old design, but it doesn't utilize any of that sort of shelf bracket idea. Everything is supported on a back leg and a front leg, and then stringers, exactly like you'd find on a railroad bridge. Exactly. And uh, all of the holes are going to be dug down to a full two feet in depth. Right. And they're all going to be properly cemented in. Square, straight, level, and fully two feet cemented into the ground. Yes. And that should solve a lot of these dumb problems. I would hope so. Now I had also been somewhat concerned. I know that the ground can be somewhat elastic. Uh -huh. And over time, some of these posts might raise up and lower down. So I wanted to put this together with bolts in such a way that should something move, it can be unbolted and raised and lowered. So you can see that bolt at the back there. Yes. That can be pulled out, the whole thing raised or lowered, and then bolted back together. And if one of these posts completely fails, it can be replaced. Nice. Without tearing the whole railroad apart again. Very, very good. <laughs> Much better design. And then on top of the stringers, uh, joists, if you will, two by four uh, joists connecting the front to the back. So we're going to build this just like you would build a deck. Exactly. You can walk on this. And it'll be OSB strand board on top, roofing board. Yes. With roofing material over the top of that to keep yes. moisture from getting to any of this. Right. And then here again, everything held in place with screws. So if something needs to be dismantled or moved, it can be dismantled or moved. But I don't think we're ever going to have a problem with that. No, it looks real solid. And then I put the OSB strand board on here and got that well screwed down to the structure. And there it is. It looks just like a, a railroad truss. Really. <laughs> it really does, That's doesn't interesting. it? interesting. Now, I was concerned that I need to get that top rail in place before these posts start to warp because they're warping as we, every time I come out here and look, they're warped a little bit more than before. You've got to get these, these upper two by fours in place, but I wanted to get the roofing material on here first um, to protect it from the weather. Yes, which we started having <laughs> some weather right about there. So we were having some weather. So the next thing was I put rolled roofing material over the strand board to protect that so that this was now becoming just exactly like the roof on your garage, for example. Right. And all the seams are sealed, everything completely watertight, just like you'd build a roof. And now I was ready to assemble the top rail on the top of this whole thing, and that should keep the posts from twisting or warping. Okay, now the construction of the top rail before these things twist up completely like pretzels. All right. And uh, what you can't see here is that there's a, this is an L girder. It's got a, a flat facing two by four, and then this front fascia is screwed to that, holding that in place. 
And so the way I did that is I measured out that back piece by cutting it to fit at the bench work and then raised it up to the top area. And in some of those places, it was too short. And in some of those places, it was too long. Isn't that weird? Because the posts were that warped. So I started in the places where the boards were too long, just forced those into position, and that straightened the posts. Oh, yay. So once the flat boards, the horizontal boards, were in place, I could then put the vertical board here, the fascia board, attached to that to keep that board from twisting and warping. And then notice that I put the seams in that board in the middle between the posts, and that actually adds strength to the whole thing. That's amazing. <laughs> now this rail out here is not just decorative. That's there to keep the posts from twisting so the other ones keep them from warping left to right and front to back. This will keep them from twisting. So some of them had already twisted. So while I was up there, I was able to just spring them back into place, twisting them by as much as two or three inches on some of those posts, and then screwing that front rail on there to secure those so they can't twist ever again. Right. Now this other rail back here is basically decorative. But I wanted that there on the outside chance that at some point we decide we want to add sunshade material right. to keep the sun off the railroad. And then I stained it Yes. and rigged the electrical. It looks good. <laughs> it looks like a real live, honest to goodness thing now. And with the proper stain on there, then also pulled a 110 line from the shop all the way around the, the course of the railroad under this thing and, and put uh, 110 electrical plugs all along the length of this thing for power. Right. Took that completely over to the uh, shed, put a 12 volt DC power supply in there and then brought the 12 volt back along the whole length of this again so that all the lighting can run off of 12 volts instead of 110. Our friend Jeff at the train shop in Gardner Village, he has got these same kind of lamps at his arcade. Yeah, and he's got the new arcade there at uh -huh. Gardner Village, and he's always used this exact same lantern design, and he showed us how to do it. Right, and it's not, not hard at all. <laughs> yeah, it uses a, fl a flickering campfire effect, an HO campfire effect for the, main, for the flickering light. <laughs> right. And then a puck light that you would normally use in like a motor home. Right, downward light. A downward light under the lantern to provide the main light source. And then we also use the 12 volt bus to power the lights inside the buildings. And this allows us to run outside day or night. I just love the effect. Isn't it it's fun? It's pretty. I installed some waterproof switches here so that all we have to do is go out there and throw a switch. Yes. And the building lights come on, the main lights come on, whatever we want. We don't have to go plug anything in. There's just waterproof switches mounted on the front of the railroad. Oh, look at that. So we had some really fun running out here last year. And right through the fall and into the winter and continued operating this on with the snow on here and everything right up to the point where we couldn't anymore. Right. But now the question on our mind is, 
is it going to still work? <laughs> I hope it survives the winter. I just, oh man. It's been shut down out here now for three or four months mm -hmm. with snow stacked up on it and bad weather and freezing temperatures. And now the question is, what's left of all of this? Right. Now just as a quick aside, uh, the track power right now is temporary. I'm using an old uh, uh, Aristocraft uh, wireless throttle that I bought decades ago, <laughs> uh, just as a temporary system. The train engineer throttle, uh, this will all be DCC ultimately, but while it's all under construction, this makes a really great way to run the trains. Yes, yeah, good test equipment. Okay, you ready? Let's see if it's going to run this year. Let's try. Let's fire it up. The old colors try. And even just uh, twigs. A handful of twigs. That's it. When I had the ground level railroad years ago, opening up the railroad was a two day process because there was mud over part of the tracks. And one of the advantages of elevated bench work is there now the track is, is clear you know maybe I better move my cell phone I'm not into long distance <laughs> or rolling there's a small issue here with bird poo small issue are you sure it's bird, not squirrel? I should say a small issuance. Issuance? Yes, yeah, so a bird poo. <laughs> This is working better because I'm blowing with the wind instead of into it. <laughs> it hadn't occurred to me to check the wind direction. Yeah, there you go. Scientific North method. Northwest. Well, that's Utah. I think for the most part we're ready to run trains. I Yay! Mean, I, this is Nickel now. This is uh. the Yagas Creek track and um, before it was aluminum uh. and keeping aluminum conductive is always a problem. Right. It's fine if you're on steam or something but yeah. in theory, in theory, a little bit of oxide but yeah. I, I think just a a bit of a wipe down and, and it'll be fine. It'll be good to go. Now the other issue is that these three tracks end right here. I'll say they do. Woo! And these two tracks here are gonna continue around through a dog bone loop and back on themselves. And this is the feed to inside the garage. Only there's this problem called end of track. Yeah, end of track, end of layout. And so this summer's project, if all goes well, is to build almost this same thing along the back wall here, but without the without the pokey ups, just the just the low part. And that'll continue on around here and along here and up to this wall over here. And then one of the next things up is to punch a hole <laughs> right about there. Yes. Uh, into the bathroom. <laughs> we do have a sense of humor. And that's where the, the train will go into the 
inside part of the railroad. Oh, really? We hope. We hope. We hope. So that's that's the plan. Moment of truth. <laughs> Let's put power to it and see if it goes. And oh oh oh! Da 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 This is with no track cleaning other than blowing the detritus off. Operation will probably improve a bit when we actually clean the track. Even slow speed is working really good. It's nice to have a railroad that you can just come out, turn the power on after it's been sitting for months and without doing anything more than blowing the leaves and detritus off. Now, I'm anticipating a problem up here. Mm. I bought those used switches yes. last year and they are Yagas Creek and they're supposed to be nickel silver that I bought from the guy. And... Um, as I was laying them last year, I'm going, this isn't nickel, this is aluminum. Oh dear. And I can't solder to it. Oh. And that's what happens when you can't solder to it. So the yeah. joints, it was pulling power through the joints last year, but they've gotten, they've gotten cruddy. So let's. Oh, I can see corrosion. Yeah, let's reverse the direction and give it a little nudge. And there's the problem. So, the big problem are these rails here. These are aluminum too, but I think they're conducting through here. But these rails here, I need desperately to put jumper wires to them and there's no way to solder to it. So first up for this year, I knew all along was get rid of that aluminum rail. Yep. I'm gonna go in there and replace that. Well, with, you can uh, see the corrosion all over the nickel. tracks and yeah. yeah. And then that way I can power these frogs and because right now these frogs power through these rails, which power through the, and, and there's no way, there's just no way. And it was working last year, mm -hmm. but I knew that once water got in there and everything, it uh, would stop. Yeah. This is one of those times when I'm really disappointed to be right. Hurt. Uh. Hurt. So it's kind of intermittent through here and then it's going to stop again yep. on the next switch when yep. it gets on top of those rails and then it's going to pick up again. No, and that's, you know, the previous railroad was all aluminum. Mm. So one of the things that I decided on tearing the whole thing apart was this time, not only is it going to be all nickel, it's going to be a lower profile Yagas Creek, best of the best. Tired of messing around with stoopy stuff. Stoopy? Stoopy stuff. <laughs> stoopy stuff. And uh, look at this. It's been months under snow and ice and bird poop and. and uh, well, even a limb falling. More than just blowing the, the, the detritus off the track. Yep. And we're up and running. That's really cool. Entirely on track power. So now, let's see if the crossover still working. Okay, I'll get my arm off from the two tracks because I don't want to end up with a fuzzy perm. And here again, it's going to require Bush. encouragement. Kind of reminds me of trying to get the cat to go to bed at night. Yeah. 
It's just got that stiff. He just doesn't want to. He sleeps no. all day. Oh, look, 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 oh look, it look. did it. It did it. Powered it. through there. Yay. Anyway, Maybe those, just... those problems will go away when I get rid of the aluminum. And we just went through the crossover <clears throat> under the opposing direction. Slick as snot. Excuse me. Slick as slick. <laughs> and, uh... I'm just thrilled that with no track cleaning whatsoever, we are up and running. So I believe we now have a fully functional winter, summer, day, night, uh, not warping, not twisted railroad. I sure hope so. Man. And jeez, now just to finish this, uh, we'll add to it. Yes. And eventually make a complete finished railroad out here. But this time, I think we've got it right. Right, let them learn. And now we can also start adding street lights and details and trees and... All kinds of things. <laughs> this, is, this is where it really gets fun. Yes, exactly. And uh, really looking forward to that. But yeah. first, I want to build some more bench work. Yep and extend the railroad. Exactly. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel or if you're not a subscriber, please get over to the channel and please subscribe. Right. And uh, the easy way to become a subscriber is with the infamous blue button. Are we ready for that? Here it comes. Right there, the blue button. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.